Righty ho then, what a way to kick off the new year than returning to one of my old favorites, Mel Brooks. And it's been a while since I've talked about his movies. Over the course of these reviews, we've looked at some great ones and some, well, duds. So, where does this one stand? That movie night here with a review for Robin Hood Men in Tights, the 1993 spoof from Mel Brooks starring Carrie Elways, Dave Chappelle, Richard Lewis, Amy Yazbeck and Roger Rees. The film, as per most of Brooks's filmography, is a wild and wacky parody of the Robin Hood film, specifically the classic 1930s version with Errol Flynn and the then newest incarnation, Kevin Costner's 1991 offering, Prince of Thieves. And, well, the film follows the basic setup. Robin Hood and his merry men battling Prince John and his lackey, the sheriff, here of Rottingham, while he tries to woo Maid Marian, though, of course, now with Brooks's distinctly offbeat style. The cast here is pitch perfect, all hamming it up and with tongues firmly inside cheeks. Elways relishes his Flynn impression, smiling with pearly whites while delivering lines for the wonderfully stereotypical higher class accent exploited for a joke during the film, and he's not a half bad fighter and physical comic to boot. He's joined by the likes of Chappelle as his Morgan Freeman-esque sidekick Achu, who works well off Elways and brings more modern brashness and sharpness to what is usually a much more eloquent and refined role as well as Lewis and Rees as the wonderfully slimy villains, though Lewis plays it terrifically straight-faced as Prince John, with his trademark distance, and seeming detachment from everything that's going around him as crazy as it gets. Amy Asbeck also does well as the romantic interest Marion, bringing that sense of naivete and seeming innocence that contrasts and works off of a lot of raunchy material in the film. Heck, even in supporting roles, we get the likes of Patrick Stewart in a brief cameo as King Richard and a wonderfully crazy Tracy Oldman as the Sheriff's Witch. On a technical level, Brooks goes definitely more for the Errol Flynn look, with a lot of bright, colourful sets and costumes, recreating the style of an old Hollywood adventure. Though at times, it isn't afraid to recreate the grander size and stunts from the Costner film, proving himself to be actually a fairly decent action director, though this is usually in the surf of more slapstick pieces. Musically, however, Brooks' regular John Morris isn't here, rather it's TV veteran Hummy Man, and though he captures the needed bombast, whimsy, and underscores the more physical gags a la Carl Starling, after hearing Morris's shamelessly grandiose, indulgent, and operatic work for another comical swashbuckler, Yellowbeard, it definitely feels a little tame by comparison and just not as memorable. But, as with all of Brooks's work, the script is the make-or-break factor. The absurd wordplay, the cartoonish sight gags, and the jabs at beloved scenes from the original source material are all present. But is it still funny after so many films? Well, definitely more yes than no, though it doesn't quite hit the highs of, say, Blazing Saddles or Young Frankenstein. Not that Brooks, his cast, or his writers aren't trying, but Men in Tights' key issue is that it definitely dates itself more than his other work, since there are a number of gags that are very specifically making fun of things from the early 90s, as opposed to Frankenstein, for example, which focused squarely on the Universal films and took some more general pot shots at tropes from the 30s, such as the Top Hat-esque musical number putting on the Ritz, thus giving it a little more of a timeless quality. Men in Tights, however, gives us jokes devoted to things like the Pump It Up sneakers, White Men Can't Jump, or even a big rap number at the end. And though these are done better than a lot of more modern spoofs, since it does it for a story reason as opposed to say, Hey, it's such and such from such and such. Ain't that funny, kids? It definitely feels like the film is pandering a lot more. And really... Brooks is giving in a little more to the trend of the then spoofs, having topical or popular references, just to give the audience at that moment in time a quick and easy laugh, as opposed to writing something a little more meaty. I mean, as a 90s person, I get them, and they give me a mild nostalgic chuckle, but when I distance myself and look at it as a film, a lot of younger viewers are probably going to look at that and say, what's the joke? What, what's funny here? 
But even with that aside, there aren't that many of these gags, thankfully, and the film still has a lot of things going for it, especially when it focuses on making fun of the Robin Hood mythos, whether it be the famous archery scene from the animated Disney version, the over fanciful fight scenes from the Flynn version where men in armor are literally knocked down like dominoes, or even the prison escape from the Costner version. Even the sometimes overly fanciful credits are not spared, with a whole village being burnt down by the literally blazing titles. Shameless skewering of any and all tropes is what made Brooks so great, and it still shines through here again, though not as consistently when he feels the need to lower the bar at points. Always in the service of laughs, sure, but not necessarily to the film itself, and that is a tiny bit of a letdown. However, when it focuses itself, Men in Tights fires on all cylinders, and it is quite a treat. And while closing this, I give Robin Hood Men in Tights a silver star. It may not be a laugh a minute romp fest like some of Brooks's other work, but the film still has many of its own quirky, silly perks, and it definitely makes for a very enjoyable time.